be on Showtime. And he's uh, joining us next with our man, Marcus Hayes, who conducted this interview with Frank. So let's go ahead and roll the tape. Let's just jump right wow. into it. Let's, let's jump right into it, man. Our team, Haryutnin, July 15, Cosmopolitan, Las Vegas, Nevada. Tell us about the bout, man. The guy's a bronze medalist, undefeated like you are. Yeah, man. I feel like, you know, he going to come out, you know, uh, he going to come out to win. You know, he coming out. He a tough fighter, I feel like. Uh, and he ain't undefeated for nothing. You know, he looking for those, one of those opportunities, you know, upset a guy like me who, you know, trying to upset one of them other top guys. So, uh, you know, I just got to go into this fight, man, just on point physically, mentally. You know, I got to be uh, on point in all areas, you know, because uh, I don't really – it ain't too much on him. You know, he got a, a, a nice amateur background, got a lot of experience in amateurs, uh, but the pros different, you know. So uh, we got we got 12 rounds. We got 12 rounds to uh, get it in. So I'm looking forward to it. Definitely, man. Uh, I know you're goal-oriented. I know you're a guy that likes to critique himself and fix his own mistakes. Um, what are some of your goals on fight night, July 15th? Just looking better than I did my last fight. You know, uh, it was some things that in my last fight uh, that I could have, me looking at myself, I could have, you know, been a little smoother on or, or you know, sharper with. So going into this fight, you know, fixing those things for myself. And uh, when I go back and look at the, the footage, knowing that I did that, you know, we've been putting a lot of work in in the gym, uh, working on those things too. So uh, just basically, man, just looking better than I did the last fight. Definitely. Um, you're fighting a guy, you alluded to it earlier, tremendous amateur background, uh, a medalist, an Olympic medalist, uh, a guy that kind of, in the in the old way of boxing, in the old way of boxing, what we'll frown on a guy like you? Less than thirty amateur fights yourself, but kind of skyrocketing up in the pros, garnering a lot of attention. Do you feel like you need to look good uh, and really impress versus RTM on next Saturday night? Oh yeah, most definitely. You know, uh, that's every fight though. You know, I feel like I got to go out and you know just because because I you know I came on the scene late. So now, you know, everybody talking about me and seeing if, if I'm him, like if I'm the guy who they uh, expecting to be or, you know, so, you know, I got that, I got that, I got that weight I got to carry, you know, I got to show up, you know, so uh, coming out for this fight, the next fight, the next fight, I got to, I got to keep showing up. Um, I don't want to have no declines in my performances, so uh Come July 15th, you know, I'm going to show up and I'm going to be a better version than I was uh, back when I fought uh, Revere. You mentioned the weight. Uh, is there any pressure that comes along with it? I know everywhere you go, I've been around you several times, get mobbed every time I'm with you. Um, the pressure seems like it's mounting. Uh, in your own words, what's it feel like to be on the cusp of championship prowess? Uh, I feel like it's just a part of it. You know, it's something that, a lot, like, sometimes some people don't be ready for it or some people, you know, they fall in love with it and then, you know, it affect them. So it's just like, uh, it come with it. You know, I got to see it before, you know, it started happening to me. Just being around Earl and, you know, other fighters, you know, I got to see certain things. So now, you know, uh, man, it's just, it's, it's dope to see it, you know, everywhere I go with somebody who know me or, you know, uh, telling me good luck and stuff like that. So it's just basically, man, just uh, being able to handle that and, and not, not I feel like not falling in love with it to the point where it gets your head too big or, you know, you lose focus of who you are. And when we talk about losing focus in boxing, the penalty for losing focus is losing consciousness. Um, your opponent, um, when I broke his film down, a couple of words that I wrote down, I wrote down that he was awkward. One thing yeah. that said to me that he was very awkward. And the second thing was he was hook happy. He hooks when he's coming in and he hooks when he's leaving. Um, maybe there's chances for counter punch opportunities. I know you're meticulous in breakdown tape. What have you seen in him that you think you can capitalize on briefly? Um, the, basically the exact same thing you just said. Like he awkward fighter. Um, he liked to throw hooks. Then he got that that switch it up, pickable style with the 
coming in with the head movement and try to land a big shot. Uh, man, so I see a lot of different things that I can capitalize off of that he do. Uh, but, you know, when I'm in there is when I really get to see what what I'm able to do and what I'm not able to do. So, uh, uh, man, I just plan on – I just got to be on point on my end. You know, I just got to be on point. But I definitely see some – I definitely see some stuff. You know, he throws shots from weird angles. You know, he throw a lot of punches from different type of angles. He ain't that just like, oh, it's coming from this way. Like, you got to be on it. See, it throws so you'll feel like something coming some way and throw a punch from a whole nother way. So, just basically, I just got to be on, on my A game. If you were to have a prediction for your own fight, what would you say? Say that one more time. If you were to have a prediction for next Saturday night, what would it be? Uh... I'm 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 trying to put on a like spectacular performance. You know, I'm trying to open some more eyes up. So, you know, I'm definitely uh looking for a stoppage. Okay. Speaking of spectacular performances, you've been in with a lot of guys in sparring that have elicited a lot of the most memorable knockouts, namely a guy named Tank Davis. You shared the ring with Tank Davis before. I've seen his stories, I've heard the stories. Um, what did you learn from sharing the ring with Tank Davis, even though it was about two, three years ago, right? Yeah, it was a while ago. Um, man, it was a it was a dope experience, you know, to get in there and you know to see like what one of them top guys is like. You know, he's super, super explosive um, with his shots. You know, just super snappy with his shots and stuff like that. So just getting in there, getting a uh, getting that feel to you know, getting in there with a champion or whatever. It was a good experience. Definitely, man. And speaking of champions, 135, the king of 135, the undisputed champion at 135, uh, the guy with all the hardware, Devin the Dream Haney. Devin and Shakur Stevenson been going back and forth. Uh, it was rumored that Devin sent Shakur a contract, a 75-25 contract that um, – was was looked at as kind of cap for Shakur Stevenson. What do you think about those numbers? I mean, I don't. I mean, it's you know, I, from what I seen, they Shakur was basically saying that he feel like he worth more. Um, feel him on that. He want a, a, a better split, a more fair split. But uh, I feel like Devin. I don't know. He took like a small, a lower percentage to go against uh uh cambosis you know it was like there. like 70 it was like 78 22 or something like that it was pretty low yeah so he had to you know he had to do that so i feel like uh sometimes as fighters you know we gotta we gotta uh we might have to accept certain terms like that you know to get in those in those type of positions and then you know the tables turn so uh i feel like you know they want to make the fight happen if that's what Devin, you know, uh, trying to get get him to take, that I feel like that'd be the only way that uh that get the fight to happen. If they called the ghost and gave you a take it or leave it scenario like that, seventy five twenty five, Frank, you got thirty minutes to decide what's Frank Martin's team doing. Oh, we gonna we gonna bang out. We gonna take that. We gonna take that because we trying to get to the top, you know. And then after that, table was gonna turn. So. Definitely, man. And when we talk about tables turning, um, your gym, Derek James has amassed what is probably one of the most impressive gyms in recent boxing memory with the undisputed champion, champion Jamel Charlo, Earl Spence Jr. unified welterweight champion, AJ, ex-heavyweight champion, yourself on the cusp of being a champion, Ryan Garcia, up and coming heavyweights like Jeremiah Milton, what is that vibe like in that gym? Oh, we've been grinding. Vibe been vibe been crazy. You know, it's been all work. Everybody, you know, feeding off each other and getting better. You know, a lot of good work and sparring. You know, the 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 atmosphere in the gym been it been pretty turned up. You, for all intents and purposes, Frank, you're tied to history so closely. You are having a front row seat to witness Earl Spence Jr. on his quest for history to attain the undisputed title at 147. Man, what has this journey been like so far watching Earl Spence Jr. day in, day out? It's been good. You know, I got to, you know, be around him when he was wanting to fight and talking about it, you know, maybe like two years ago. 
uh, wanting that fight and just seeing it now, you know, it's it's happening. It's here now. So uh, just seeing the preparation from when he said he wanted it to now, you know, it's kind of like, you know, he got he got his opportunity. And now, you know, he's been grinding for a long time in the gym, even even when he didn't have fight schedule. So uh, it's, it's a good feeling to see him, you know, getting what you want. I hear a lot about when guys, teammates, you talk to teammates and they say, he appears to be on a different level. Have you seen Earl hit that different level yet in preparation for Terrence Crawford? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but he he just one of those guys, man. He don't like he train hard all all the time. You know, um, he try to do the right things all the time. As far as you know, to have himself fully prepared, you know, for fights. So I feel like it's just I wouldn't say it's just another fight because it's a huge fight, you know. But for the most part how we do over there at out here basically we train for every fight fight like it's a championship fight what are your expectations for july 29 when when you get terrence crawford and earl spence jr locking horns at t-mobile arena uh, i feel like it's gonna be you know it's gonna be good it's gonna be a good fight uh it's gonna be a chess match and um i just feel like you know he just he just he's just gonna have that he just going it's about who make the less mistakes, you know, and uh we real sharp. We don't make too many mistakes, you know. Uh, we got a great trainer. So uh, I feel like it's gonna come down to that right there. And speaking of a great trainer, great trainers usually become great because they overcome monumental tasks. Uh another monumental task looks like back to back, Derek James taking on Canelo Alvarez and his camp with Eddie Reynoso. Uh what did you think about that when you heard about Jamel Charlo and the announcement with Canelo Alvarez? It was unexpected. I ain't, that was one that was super like unexpected for me. You know, I didn't know like it kind of came out of the blue, but for that to happen, you know, it's kind of like like it's crazy because I'm in a mix of a whole lot of greatness. You know, uh, from Earl to Jamel, you know. Uh, just being on this team, man, it's kind of it's, it's dope. It's dope to see all of the all these big fights happening, and then like Jermail fight was super unexpected, but now it's here. Two undisputed champions uh, finna go at it, man. I'm I'm looking forward to it. So watch. To it. Hey, to circle back to you, Frank. Lastly, uh, let the fans know where they can catch the fight July 15. Uh, go ahead and plug yourself, man. The fight to be on the fight. It's in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan. If you guys can't make it to the Cosmopolitan, uh, tune in on Showtime Live. Uh, maybe I think uh, 9 p.m. Maybe. I, don't take me on the time, but tune in to Showtime. In Pacific. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tune in to Showtime. You guys follow me on uh, Instagram at Frank Martin 2016 Tune in. Let's go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Marcus Hayes, Fight Hub TV with the ghost. Frank Martin, Frank, we'll see you during fight week, man. Take care. All right, now take care. Bye, man. That was Frank Martin. He returns to the ring uh, coming up this weekend in Las Vegas on Showtime. Uh, big ups to him and to Marcus Hayes uh, for conducting the interview. I, I would have been real curious, and I know there, there's time limits uh, for these interviews, but I would have been curious to see like his, his take, because he said it was unex unexpected, his take, how he sees uh, Jermel facing off with Canelo and what he thinks about uh, the size difference and, and some of the things that Derek touched on. So he feels that maybe the potential key to, to the fight for at least for Jermel is the athleticism and speed of a, a smaller uh, Jermel Charlo uh, going up and way I'm surprised though, but it, it does make sense uh, with Derek saying that he doesn't want Jermel weighing uh, really heavy, that he wants him to be around 164, 165. Makes sense. You know, three, three, four pounds is not that big of a difference, but uh, Jermel definitely probably be the lighter on his feet, uh, quicker, more agile uh, fighter in there, uh, given that. The other thing, too, is I wish I would have gotten a little bit more uh, from uh, Frank uh, with how Arrow's been looking in his preparation, but we, we got a lot from Derek on that, him saying that um, Arrow is looking ferocious, that when he does the pad work, his shoulders are sore. And, and you know what? There's one thing that Derek brought up that I, I didn't think about before, and, and that's uh, this is the first opponent he's saying that 
Terrence in the faceoff that hits as hard as Arrow. And hey, if, if you look at Arrow's track record against some of these guys, man, broken orbitals, broken beat up faces, Ugas, Kel Brook, he he busted the other eye after uh, Gennady Golovkin. So it's like blunt force trauma is what Arrow throws in, in these punches, man. Uh, and some guys just come out after a Spence fight just looking like they've been through the meat grinder, man. Jeez, jeez. But that's interesting, man. I, I want to get a, just their thoughts. Like uh, Crawford and, and Bomax thoughts like, yo, what do you make of, of this guy's power? And is is that going to be the difference in this fight? Is is that? Um, the other exciting thing is he says, I you know, and I hope this is this is true because oh my god, what what, what a freaking fight this would be if what Derek said ends up happening. They feel each other out for one or two rounds, and then it's just all out freaking war, war till round nine, Hagler Hearns type battle. They're just slugging it out, exchanging with each other. Oh my god, I I I can't imagine it. Like that'd be the most insane. But best scenario uh, for for that fight to happen. But uh, that fight going down July 29th. Uh, but Frank's fight going down this week. And also in action, too, uh, this Saturday on the zone is uh, Alicia Baumgartner. Uh, she's having a homecoming. She's returning to Detroit. Uh, Alicia being trained uh, by Tony Harrison. Uh, and then uh, in two weeks, George Cambosis returns to the ring. Uh, taking on Maxie Hughes in Oklahoma. That's such a random place to have uh, George fight in Oklahoma. Uh, you think that they're they're getting a site fee and and it's probably really really cheap to put on fights there in Oklahoma, and they, and they want people to go there. But really random place for his first fight back to have it in Oklahoma. You would would think maybe they'd have it in in Las Vegas or or somewhere that has a. a a big concentration of like Greek or Australian immigrants living there. But I, you know, I just know a lot of the times it, it does come down to site fee, how much it is to stage the fight at a certain venue. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day for events like, uh, like this, that aren't, you know, big championship fights, because this is George's uh, comeback fight. You, you got to be cost effective uh, with that. So, you know, I, I certainly understand that, but I know, that was my first initial reaction was, what the heck, Oklahoma? George? Why, why is George fighting in Oklahoma? What? But uh, big ups to George. Uh, he's always great to us. Um, wish him nothing but the best uh, as well. But looks like we've come to the end of our uh, weekly interview show, recap show. Thank you guys so much 